Hey guys, Brian with Thunder Laser USA Support and Innovation Lab. We had a request for some information on how to produce a leather debossing die. So I have some eight millimeter cherry here and I've been experimenting just a little bit with it. I've never done a debossing die before. Um, so we're just gonna put this material in the path of the autofocus sensors. And this is going to be a little bit of a long workflow. I'll time lapse uh, some of the repetitive stuff, but uh, it'll give you some good insight as to what's going on. So let's update the overlay and uh, let's start with some text. So we'll put some text here. Hello, text. And um, we'll go to our cuts panel and it's set to 300 speed, 80 power and we want to make sure that it outputs. And if we look at that right now, it's just going to engrave where the text is, and we don't want that. We want the inverse. And most of the time you want to uh, cut these out. So let's make a square around it, a rectangle, something like this, and we'll control all, center them up, and uh, let's get it up a little bit where it won't. I'll tell you what, we may just make the whole thing a little smaller in the interest of time. Let's do that. So we'll make it a little bit smaller like this. So now let's look at the preview. And if you'll notice, now it's doing what we want. It's engraving everything but the text. Now the problem is we want to cut this out. So okay, we will select the outside line and turn it a different layer and set it to line. Now let's look at the preview. Now it's just engraving the text again. So to fix that, you can choose this, duplicate it, and turn it black. Now when you look at the preview, the text is left, everything is engraved around it, and if you'll look at the play, if you'll notice the cursor, the little, the red crosshair, you see it going around the perimeter after it gets done engraving, it's still doing the cut line. It's kind of hard to see, but it's a little red crosshair. So we do have our cut in there, and it's at the right moment. If we move this up, then it's gonna cut out the rectangle first and then engrave, and you definitely don't want that. So make your cuts at the bottom of the list and they'll use this priority. So we've got this one set up and we've got it looking the way we want. The uh, cut settings look good. The fill settings look good. So let's go ahead and save this real quick. Now let's do an image. So let's just pull this over and uh, look for logo. We'll go to images. Tools. We want it rather large. And let's look for transparent stuff just because. So let's just do this one. We'll save image as a firm logo. And let's drag it into Lightburn. Now, this is a raster image. Let's get it smaller. Something we can work. Okay, so this is a raster image. If you look at it, it's going to do the text. But if you look real close, it's a little sloppy. I don't, I don't like it. So what we're going to do is right click, we're going to trace the image, and it's going to make a vector out of this. And that looks good. So now if you look at it, it's nice and smooth, okay? So let's look at this. Now it's engraving text, or engraving just the logo. So again, let's put an ellipse around this one. And you can make this outside uh, the same shape as the leather patch that you're going to use uh, for help for alignment purposes. And if you make your thing out of acrylic, um, then you can actually see through parts of it and that will help with alignment as well. So we're going to select those two objects and center them up. That's not really center, but it kind of is. It doesn't look it. <clears throat> but now let's look at our preview. Now it's doing what we want it to do. And the same thing again, we want to add a cut line so we're going to duplicate this and then we'll make it red and then we have a cut line and let's preview again it's doing what we want and yep there's the cut line going around the edge so this looks good so now we've made one out of a jpeg image and we've made one from the uh, editor within lightburn and just again for time's sake I'm going to shrink these down more because you get the idea. So we're going to put those there and uh, let's go back to our camera control, update the overlay, make sure the wood hasn't moved. Uh, there's one other thing that I forgot to mention. We should probably mirror this. 
so that it will come out correctly. So don't forget to mirror it, okay? So let's look at the preview again. It's looking good the way we want it to. I'm gonna go over here. <clears throat> ah, we need to focus. That's gonna throw us off. That's, the, that's gonna throw our measurements off here. It, it uh, changes the accuracy because uh, so, the camera's calibrated to the focal point. So that's easy enough to fix. Um, we'll go over to the move panel. We'll focus Z. I already have the material where it needs to be. So now it's focused. Let's update our overlay. You notice it changed a little. So actually everything got a little bigger. So let's stretch it out a little. And that looks good. We'll uh, look at the preview one more time. It looks the way we need it to look. So we'll close the lid. and we'll send the job. All right, so now we're done. And they are a little small and uh, they need to be cleaned up. I usually use lukewarm water and a uh, soft bristle toothbrush. Um, and of course these are miniatures, but it gets the point across. It'll take a little bit longer to make them uh, full. Uh, but you definitely want them thick enough where they'll be substantial and they won't break when you press them in. So, but that, that gives you an idea of how to do it. And you'll have to tweak it a little bit to your uh, specific application and what laser you have. Uh, but that'll give you the general idea. So until next time, Brian from Thunder Laser USA.